Hi, and welcome to The Rave TV. I'm Linda Kay here with Matt and CB of Blue October. Hello. Hello. Hi, guys. Welcome back. Thanks. It's good to be back. Thank you. All right. So how is this tour going so far? Uh, it's been going well. We've uh, been on the road now for two months. Two months, yeah. We're doing like kind of like a month out, a week off, month out, week off. We just had a short three-day intermission at home, so that was nice. Sweet. We flew in today, and uh, we're going to about 10 more days, yeah. about a week off, and we're going to do Europe uh, through mid-June. I think it's going to be just pretty much nonstop for the next two years. Yeah. That's, that's how we do it. It's summing it up. That's how you roll. <laughs> yeah. So what did you do on your time off when you were at home? Ran errands, paid bills, did laundry. That's it. <laughs> I, I, I played with my daughter pretty much nonstop. Got her some new shoes. We played outside. And I got to see my lovely fiance too, so that was not, that was great. Yes. All right. So let's talk about your latest album, Approaching Normal. Just fill us in about everything and the songwriting and just how everything's been going so far with it. Steve Lillywhite. We he produced the record. What do you think about Steve? I like Steve. He's a great guy. <laughs> no, it was great working with Steve. He uh, he allowed us to be very creative on the record. Uh, let us explore each and every one of our ideas. Uh, it seems like in the past, other producers, they get in their head what they want, and they don't even want to entertain any thought you might have on anything. It's kind of funny how it works like that. But this time, I mean, any, any little anything intricate, he would go, let's put it, let's do it, put it in there. And we'd go back and listen to it. We'd both look at each other and go, yeah, it helps the song. Or, no, it doesn't really add anything or it doesn't help the song, so why put it in there, you know? Mm -hmm. And he, the thing that he did um, that I think is really evident on this record, as opposed to the other ones, is a lot of the other records are very produced, you know? And him being such a big producer, you'd think that this would be the, the slick record, but it's not. It's actually probably the most meat and potatoes record we have. Like, instead of like 10 layers of vocals, you know, it's just one vocal, you know? And that's, that's new to us. It's, it's new to us to kind of be raw, so, but we like it. Would you say each of you put in your own, like, equal amount of co like, contributions to the album with you know with the songwriting and um you know we got together a, a few months before we went into the studio and did pre-production and uh, a lot of the songs uh justin pretty much walks in and with his acoustic guitar and goes this is what i've got uh, a lot of them are already structured you know everything's written we kind of if you might say we paint the picture he, he brings a nice frame and a nice and like pencil stencil of it and then we we throw our colors on it um there's, there's one song dirt room uh that started off with just a lick that I started playing at sound checks and the band, uh, Justin was out of town. We were rehearsing without him and we explored that song and, and kind of figured out a chorus for it in a, in a breakdown and a bridge and everything. And then Justin came back and started to sing to it. And he was like, this isn't working. It's not working. And then Matt had the idea. He's like, well, let's drop it down like two, uh, what was it? It was like from a, I think you dropped it like two steps or something. Yeah. No, it was like just four steps. I think it was four steps. Yeah. It dropped it down four steps and then all of a sudden it worked. So it is, you know, um, th that's pretty much how the process is, mm -hmm. you know. And every record's a little bit different. This one, Foiled was more, he kind of went to, he went out to L.A. and sort of had everything really structured out ahead of time. But this one was more like, let's get together and let's, you know, let's go in the garage and get our hands dirty. And that's, that's what we did. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, like the songs, they have such meaning and so deep. I was going to say, well, what are the inspirations for some of the songs? Dirt, dirt Room was basically a song. Pissed. That, yeah, pissed off. <laughs> you know, a song about... Torture. That's somebody, yeah. you know, I'm not going to say any names or anything, but somebody that tries to beat you down, you know, take something off, you know, take something from you, money, uh, anything. You know, like, a, like getting sued or, or this or that. And it's just... You know, it's just a, it's a song about just standing up and saying no, and kind of like like the video when uh, like the script gets flipped. You know, all of a sudden this person that was in there robbing this lady, all of a sudden this lady just starts whooping, you know, whooping his ass. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was a cool twist on the whole thing. You know, don't the victim becomes the victimizer, and uh, it's just a, it's a song about just standing up for yourself, really. Mm -hmm. You know, and what, what do you what do you and think, then, man? You know, every, but every other song is uh, it's pretty all over the map, actually. I think that the record flows from um, from the start of the record to the end of it. I think that it makes sense. The title's Approaching Normal. And the beginning of the record is a very dark place. Way to the World is probably the dark, it is the darkest song on the record. And then by the end of it, it gets to this very happy place, you know, where um, the character uh, sort of finds his, you know, his... Uh, his place in life, you know, uh, Justin had a daughter and obviously that had a huge influence on, on the writing, um, except for the little twist, which is the song, the end that comes in at the very end and sort of, you know, just when you're happy, it's sort of, Ooh, that's kind of creepy. It scares you a little bit, but like the world just shattered. Yeah. Right. 
but but each song also tells its own story yeah. you know so I'm like kangaroo cry you know people have asked what's what's kangaroo what's a kangaroo cry you know but basically the song was inspired you know justin was at the airport and just us seeing soldiers go off to war and stuff like that uh, like, have you ever seen how sad a kangaroo can look, you know? Like, it, and he, he just made, it made him think of a kangaroo cry just because people are so sad watching their loved ones, you know, leave. And so that's kind of how that song, that, that's, that's my interpretation of it, at least. I, I, you know, you actually just answered it for me. I've, I'm in the band. I've always wondered <laughs> what that meant. Actually, you know, you, know, my, you know, my mother is the one who, who told me that. She was like, well, you, duh, a kangaroo cry. She's like, you see how sad kangaroos are? I, was, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, you're right. Kangaroos do look pretty sad sometimes. And I guess one's crying. Ryan looks real sad. So. Wow. Great. All right, so um, tonight is your sixth time performing here at the Rave. So I'm sure you guys have gotten a chance to explore the building a little bit, hey? Yeah, this is a little freaky. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, didn't y'all close up? The, there's a hole over there y'all closed up. I think that a few years ago I was able to you like crawl. It's like a little door, and you crawl through that, and then you go into like the pool area. And I was walking around. I mean, I don't yeah, I mean, I'm not, not going to tell you that I wasn't just going, oh, well, I'm all content, you know. I mean, I was kind of, you know, looking around. This is weird. This place, this place is definitely has a, some history behind it. It's a great place. Uh, it's such yeah. a good place to play. The crowd's always fantastic. But there is this vibe about this place. It's like whenever we go on the road with other bands and, you know, you're talking about, oh, we've played here, we've played there. This place always comes up. And it's like, if you played the rave, oh, my God, yeah, I've played the rave. <laughs> Did you go in the room? Yeah, I went in the room. Yeah. Right. There's, there's the, did you piss yourself? Yes, I did. Did you? Yeah. I, I forgot, dude. There's the upstairs, too. Yeah. The big, big room. Yeah. Because that was, I remember I walked into that. I think the first time we ever played room, we played on the, in the small the small stage. I was just walking, wandering around, you know, checking the place out. And all of a sudden, I'm in this big black area. I'm just walking through it. And I think I ended up getting a flashlight. I turned it on. I was just, whoa, this room's huge. Like, I was just in this massive room standing in the middle of it. I guess I used to be at an old dance hall. Yeah, I mean, there, there used to be boxing here. Um, wow. There was, there was a Tejano concert last yes, time here upstairs. Yes, and then somebody, right. somebody actually came down and grabbed me. It was after the show, and I'd had a couple drinks, you know, so I was a little relaxed. And they were like, hey, man, you got to go check this out upstairs. And I went up there, there was like 3,000 white cowboy hats just mm -hmm. yeah. bouncing around. From Texas, like, this is you know, the weirdest thing that. I've ever seen in my life, man. Yeah, we have a lot of different things here. I mean, yeah. birthday parties and, you know private functions, but I was going to say that I was going to ask if you did have your flashlight, because if you walk up into the ballroom and it's pitch black, I mean, Ew, don't I, fall or <laughs> run yeah, into anything. I, did it. It, it was, I made it down like into the middle of it, and I was just kind of walking, and you, there's, you, there's little hints. You, you know, it wasn't pitch black, otherwise I would have stopped, you know. Oh. And then I turned the flashlight on after I got to a point where I was like, this is, where am I? And that's when I realized I was standing in the middle of this gigantic room. Oh. And it's just, this place has little rooms, and it just keeps going. Like We walked up this way. I've never been up here before. You know, I'm just, it's like there's always a new little niche I discover when I come here. Yeah, there is also a boiler room. That's dude. I want to go. I want to go, the the go there. Okay, yeah, you guys will like get it. The Shining. Thing. Yeah, I want to go down there. That's. I was a big uh, uh, Freddy Krueger fan, so. Oh, that'd be perfect. <laughs> the boiler room. <laughs> See, all right. So, what is up next for you guys? Tour, tour, tour. Tour, tour. Like, um, well, we just put a, a video out for Say It, and Say It is just now going to radio. So that's that's pretty exciting. I mean, we, we, we all kind of felt that that was the song and the record that would be, you know, sort of the big the big one on the record for us. So I could, you know, we'll see. Maybe that won't happen, but, you know, we, uh, we, th we hope it will. Thank you guys for having Thank out you. and hanging Very with us. Much. It was fun. So definitely looking forward to the show tonight. You guys, make sure you get tour of the place and oh, yeah. come I'll back a with couple some more good stories. Yeah. <laughs> and a flashlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Flashlight. Right. Thank you again, Matt. Thank you, CB. We'll see Thank you later. You. Right. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Rave TV. Make sure to check out Blue October's current album, Approaching Normal. We'll see you next time on the Rave TV.